Well, our first feature story today is about the 2015 Dixie National Sale of Junior Champions. In February, it delivered another record breaker. The 4-H and FFA livestock exhibitors who earned champion titles at the Dixie National Junior Roundup sold their animals for top dollar. 35 scholarships were also awarded to exhibitors who excelled in livestock showing and academics. Farm Week's Amy Taylor reports from the State Fairgrounds in Jackson, Mississippi. Those who win a champion title at Dixie National Junior Roundup say they'll never forget the joyful feeling of that winning handshake from the judge. Because at that moment, they knew the next stop would be the Dixie National Sale of Junior Champions. Out of the 2,200 head of livestock shown at Roundup, only 43 market animals, which include market steers, lambs, goats, and hogs, made it to the big sale. This year broke the record for the highest total sales, surpassing 300. $182,000. Mississippi State University Extension Service Livestock Coordinator Kip Brown says watching buyers bid on high dollar animals can get intense. Some of the better memories are when two people get hung up on one animal and uh, decide they're going to show somebody how much money they got and that's really good for the kids <laughs> because uh, you, have, uh, you have people competing and they just continue to raise the bid. Sometimes you're rocking along there $100 licks or $500 licks and somebody really wants to go out there and, and blow the opponent out, they'll jump them three or $4,000 and a lot of times it'll shut the other guy down. Brown serves as one of the ringmen during the sale of champions. It's a critical role during the event. The most important thing is to create an excitement in the ring, uh, make a lot of noise to try and get those buyers excited about bidding on those animals and helping those kids out. Uh, and then more importantly, know where your bid is, know who's got the bid, and then remember who bid the last time so when you have a bid, you can go back and put that guy back in. And then at the same time, there are three of us working the ring, so each of us has an area that we work. So I'm in competition with the other two ring men to make sure that my buyers get the best deal. Brown says despite the competitive atmosphere, at the end of the day, it's all about celebrating young people's accomplishments. Uh, Tom, MSU Extension Service Livestock Specialist uh, Dean Josan describes the types of people who purchase animals. People in the from the banking industry to agriculture credit lenders to car dealers to doctors lawyers, anything and everything in between. For the most part, there are every animal that's sold will be a group of buyers that go in together. And a lot of people try to purchase animals uh, that they have a connection to. Maybe it's somebody local that they know or a customer of theirs. All buyers will be recognized at the sale uh, after every animal is sold. And then to try to go a step further, uh, they'll be recognized in the Clarion Ledger on Sunday with a two-page a color ad. It's good advertisement for the buyers. It is a tax credit. Joe Sand says each of the champion animals is taken to Starkville for instructional use after the sale. Animals that are in the sale of champions this year uh, will be taken to Mississippi State University uh, to the Department of Animal Sciences where over 350 undergraduate students will have the opportunity to get a lot of hands-on experience with high quality uh, market animals. With about 1,500 exhibitors, you're probably wondering what it takes to become one of the few at the Sale of Champions. The road to the Sale of Champions starts several months before exhibitors bring their animals to compete at the Dixie National Junior Roundup. Exhibitors say there's much more to earning a champion title than just getting your animal to look good and behave for a judge. And there's much more of a science to it than you would think when it comes to conditioning a champion animal. Hagen and Katie Ware of Montgomery County made the sale by winning grand champion lamb. Because these animals will ultimately enter the food market, Hagen says lots of exercise and practice go into reaching the winning ratio of muscle and fat content. It has to have good muscle mass, um, good bone structure. It has to have a nice rack, nice top on it. It just needs to be an overall and look good in the ring. The more muscle mass it has, the better your meat quality is, but it also needs to have a little fat or finish on it so the meat tastes better. Um, uh, like a bigger lamb would have more meat on it, but we, but if you have a small lamb but has finish on it, it's more quality. Hagen also says it's essential to ration feed properly with the correct mixture of nutrients. He says showing livestock has provided the family with traveling and life lessons. We went to Oklahoma and Kansas and 
to Arkansas and Tennessee. I mean, we went all places, and I mean, I enjoyed it because you got to see parts of the country we've never never seen. But it's it can be difficult to load lambs. I mean, they're just lambs have not been labeled the smartest animal. Playing sports, you do have to have dedication to stay in practice, but you don't have that of caring for a life. I mean, you have to with sports. If it rains, if it rains one day, you're all right with the animals. It's, Cold, sleet, snow, it doesn't matter. You have to feed your animal, you have to work your animal. If I don't get something, he, I can just ask him and he'd show me. Like at the very beginning, I didn't really know how to teach a lamb to walk, so he helped me out. Katie Ware says another valuable life lesson concerns the importance of good sportsmanship. Say good job if you like you won or you lost and you know the person who won. You always need to congratulate them because they could have, they worked pretty hard too. In addition to auctioning champion animals, 35 deserving exhibitors were awarded Dixie National Sale of Champions scholarships at $1,500 each. Recipients Peyton Netherland of Holmes County and Nicholas Webb of Lafayette County say they acquired skills that'll serve them well in college. The biggest thing I've learned is responsibility. Like you have to take care of your animal. You can't just think about yourself. When you get up in the morning, you know you have to feed. You can't just get up and get yourself ready. You know you have something else to get ready. And when it comes showtime, you can't just get up and go. You have to get up early enough to have time to get your animal ready and yourself ready to go in the show ring. The biggest skill I learned doing livestock is patience, because those animals aren't going to cooperate every day, and they're going to they're going to give you something to make you mad. So. Patience is a is a big part of life. You got to learn how to roll with the punches, and there's going to be people out there that are just hard-headed, like them animals. With unwavering support from family, buyers, and elected officials like Governor Phil Bryant and State Ag Commissioner Cindy Hyde Smith, 4-H and FFA livestock programs will continue developing outstanding citizens for years to come. From Jackson, Mississippi, I'm Amy Taylor reporting. And you can watch the story again on our Farm Week website, Facebook page, or YouTube. We'll have the links and telephone numbers there for you to find out more about participating in junior livestock shows in Mississippi. You can, all, you can contact your county extension service office to join 4-H. Participation through Mississippi FFA is also available at many public schools. Our website address, farmweek.msucares.com. And Leighton, I was adding up on my fingers, less than six months to go. Be here before we know it. The Dixie National will be back, 2016 version.